Thanks for watching another SolidWorks tutorial video from GoEngineer. This video is going to focus on using breadcrumbs and quick mates to go as fast as you can go inside of SolidWorks, particularly inside of SolidWorks assembly. So if you haven't seen my video on customization best way using shortcuts, highly recommend that video because I'm going to be using techniques that I show in this video, but this video is pretty much going to be focusing on using breadcrumbs and quick mates for assemblies to really eliminate mouse movement and the amount of time. I've taken a mouse trailer and done some experimentation with the old way of using SolidWorks versus the new way with breadcrumbs and quick mates. So I want to show you the difference. Let's just jump right into SolidWorks and look at what we can do here for breadcrumbs and quick mates. To begin with, the breadcrumbs are what comes up over in the left-hand side of your screen if you haven't got the settings set correctly to use breadcrumbs. I find breadcrumbs very ineffective if I have to travel all the way over here every time to use them. So the key to using breadcrumbs is getting into the settings. And I don't really remember where the setting is. I just type bread for breadcrumbs inside the options and go and look where the breadcrumb settings are. So if you're not seeing the breadcrumbs at all when you click on an object inside the assembly or in part mode for that reason, you need to make sure that this is checked to show the breadcrumbs. Although, like I said, they don't do you much good showing up in the upper left-hand corner. So I highly recommend showing the breadcrumbs at the mouse pointer, which means wherever the mouse pointer is. So let's just dive in and look at what we can do with breadcrumbs. Realistically, as I start working through this assembly, the entire time I'm doing this, I could iconify or set my feature tree over and get all this graphic area back to work in my CAD program rather than working in a tree that might be super, super long. So how do the breadcrumbs work? Well, first off, by clicking on any object, we can go ahead and dive deeper into the object. So I could go into the base flange. If I clicked on maybe an edge flange on the object, then I could go all the way into the edge flange or all the way into the sketch just by simply clicking and moving my mouse to the edit feature. Now I'm working top down inside the assembly and I could change anything in that property manager that I wanted to regarding the edge flange. But what I really want to do is go in and look at how we could use breadcrumbs on a daily basis. Note that these are the breadcrumbs, and they'll even have the mates in there. And they come up at the mouse pointer because of that setting. So I'm going to come in and actually just get out of my part mode there, because I was still editing this top down. And I'm going to change a different configuration. If we look at some of the mates I have here, I have some parallel mates. And these parallel mates are mated to this face right here. As you can see, it's showing me my mate references as I just hover over them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and use a different configuration that cuts that entire face away that was being used to mate with. I obviously get some mate errors over here. And before digging down into that, let, let me go in and explore maybe busting some more mates. So here's some more mates that are on this part. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go into the part. I'll, I'll point and hit my tab key to hide that. That's the quick key for hiding. But I want to go in and cut away all these faces that were being used for these concentric mates. So I'm going to do that. I have a pre-cut part with a configuration. So that blows away all those surfaces that were being used to mate with. Let me go ahead and hit shift key to bring that back. But now you can see over in my menu, I've got a bunch of mates that are broken. First off, I'm going to go in and use a little tip that came along in 2019 where I can group my mates by status. Kind of like that in 2019. Although, if I start using my breadcrumbs correctly, I don't need to worry about looking at these mates. Although over here in the tree, although I do like how it organizes everything 
when I group them by status because I can look at all the ones that I just broke right here in the tree. But like I said, I don't really even need to see this tree in order to fix these mates. I'm gonna pull it up just so you can see what's going on in the property manager as I go around and fix things. But if you know something's broke on this part, you can see the mates come up in red or on the parent part, the, paint, the mates come up in red right here in the breadcrumbs. So if I want to edit the mates, I can go in and say, edit that parallel mate with the edit feature button. And then it's asking me to replace a missing reference. That's why I wanted to show you the property manager so you could see what's going on. But you could really have that whole property manager area iconified. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, replace this with this. And look at what SolidWorks does now. Even with the parallel mates, it'll go in and replace the rest of the mates if I say there. So all my other broken mates that were parallel broken are automatically fixed. So another little tip and trick. So let's go in and look at how we can just fix these mates. Again, just editing the feature, selecting a new cylinder to replace the cylinder with that the concentric mates were made it to and saying yes, we'll replace all three mates at once. So I wouldn't suggest checking the don't show me there again on that dialog box because there are times where you might not want to transfer all the broken mates over to the same surface. So you might say no, but that gives you some good ways of just looking at fixing existing mates and using breadcrumbs Look, we could dive down deeper. I could go to the sketch and start editing the sketch right when I'm in the assembly mode by using breadcrumbs. So really a really quick way I could eliminate all this stuff over here and just start working in the middle of my screen with the breadcrumbs because I could really access any part or any feature within that part. So let's go in and look at a couple other things that we can utilize with the quick mates. So with quick mates, I can go in there and do things like an limit mate will come up along with angle limit mates as well. So any of the limit mates will come up with all the on-screen information right in front of you. So that's, you know, where you're at existing right now. Maybe I want to move that uh, or flip it back the other direction. Then go as a maximum, maybe five and a minimum, maybe zero in there. So any of the limit mates work though the same way. So you could get angle limit mates to pop up the same way. So here's an angle limit mate. And again, all the on-screen information is right there. So my existing number, I can hit the tab over and put in a maximum number and even a minimum number right here all on the screen without ever even moving my mouse. So it really saves a lot of mouse movement because I can focus my mouse in the center of the screen. Let's look at what other mates can come up now on the Quick Mates toolbar and some of the options that we have to make sure we have is settings for this. So one of the ones that I like the most now is a newer mate. It's one of the newest mates called Profile Center Mate. If I just click on a couple surfaces and then go into profile center mate, that's going to mate this with one mate rather than having to do two different width mates where I'm going in the up and down and side to side direction. You're going to see that this one mate will allow this to stay centered regardless of what my other dimensions are on the part that I got it mate to or the distance that that part's coming down, doesn't matter. My part will always stay centered in the middle of that box with just a center mate in there. That will save me about 16 different picks from doing width mates. Although width mates also come up in the menu. So if I wanted to do a width mate between these two surfaces and I wanted to place that somewhere in between these two surfaces, I'm just holding down on my control key to select all the surfaces and there's the quick pick width mate coming up in the menu. Now you notice the options for the width mate will also come up over here. So if you want that free to move up and down like it would if you 
had a loose set screw on there and that's my limit with being able to pull it or push it out. It is the width mate. So let's look at a couple other mates that they've put in here. The slot mate. If I go in and select a slot, the slot mate comes up now. And the slot mate is coming up on mine with it centered in the slot. I know this because you can see the little icon right there. And if you see, that's centered in the slot icon. Let's look and see how these quick mates really work. I need to make sure that a couple settings, especially for the slot setting in here, are set. So if I go into my options and go into my document properties, under the mates, I can set the default constraint to the slot mate. I don't have a default constraint for a width mate, but the slot mate's right here. That's why mine goes centered and slot. I think by default, it's sitting on free. So if you like things centered in a slot, go ahead and change that. Let's look at a couple other options we have in here. If I took, let me go in and finish that slot mate. I could go in and just do a regular concentric mate, of course, too, with the quick picks. That works as well. But I really like using that profile center mate for fasteners as well because it gets the concentric and the coincident all in one mate. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and offset it or I could lock the rotation, but really that's all I need to do on most of my fasteners. Now, I want to show this. I really want to show a profile center mate as well where we're mating something that needs to be flipped. The flip comes up right where you need it in all the instances that you need it in the menu. There is a critical setting that we need to make sure that all of our quick mates and the flips come up and everything correctly in the menu. And you can do this in 2021 or 2022. You need to make sure that everything in your context toolbar down here, like showing the quick mates, show OK button, and these are all set to be checked. If they're not checked, your quick mates won't work like I'm showing you right now. So a couple other things with the quick mates. We can go in and utilize that profile center mate again to do cylinders on squares and center it. Again, there's the flip. And if I wanted to flip it back, I could flip it right there. So spheres, conics, cylinders in the middle of a square, all within one mate. So some really cool, fast ways of saving you some mouse movements for mating. Here's a last little quick tip. We can go in and grab some objects and control C. And then we could go ahead and control V to paste those objects. From here, I could use a smart mate method where I'm holding down my alt key to drag and drop that over and it'll give me my first concentric mate if I go ahead and check OK there. So that's just a real quick way of grabbing a bunch of parts and not making a whole other sub-assembly out of it. You can see that in my menu, there's still a bunch of separate parts just from windowing Control C or going to the Edit Copy and Edit Paste command. So there's some real quick tips on using breadcrumbs and using the quick mates and a few other little tidbits along the way. Hope you enjoyed that SOLIDWORKS tutorial from Go Engineer.